I had no idea what the heck I was getting myself into. It's it's a lot of work. It's it's fun, especially like doing this, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of a lot of stress and a lot of additional work that you don't really anticipate. You just kind of like, oh, like let me start a business, and then it's just one task piles on top of another, on top of another, and the next thing you know, you have you do every job and you wear every hat. Yeah, it's a lot. Hey guys, my name is Josh and I am the host of the Power Perspective podcast. So we're doing a solo podcast episode for today. This is my very first time doing this. I don't know how it's going to go. I want to try to sound like I'm actually just chatting. I like to be casual with the the conversation and when I'm talking and everything. And um, so I'm going to do my best to kind of keep it conversational and awkwardly chat with a camera as opposed to a uh, someone who I'm interviewing. So we're here at the head spring of the Rainbow River and uh, I'm actually over top of my favorite spring vent out here. I'm going to take a video here with my iPhone and then you guys can see it here. And if you guys watch on YouTube, you'll be able to see the video part of this here. So here on the Rainbow River, we have the top of the river. It's about eight to 10 different spring vents. They all form together the head spring of the river. And so it's not like one specific area where the water is coming out on the Rainbow River. Each spring system and river is very different. So for this one, you just have a bunch of smaller spring vents that all feed into the river. And then there's a few more further down the river. We're just here kind of paddling around, checking out the swimming area and the head spring of the Rainbow River. It's a Saturday afternoon right now, about 6 p.m. There's a lot of people out. The water's super pretty. I'm gonna paddle over to clear area over here. So with this podcast episode, I actually had you guys, it's been, it's been a couple weeks now since I had you guys ask me some questions on my Instagram story. And so I'm responding to a few of those questions that I got. I had to take some notes to try to remind me because I, I feel like I have kind of like ADHD a little bit. And, uh, I'll definitely get off task and start chatting, blabbering about random stuff. So I'm going to try my best to keep on task and, and stick to the notes. So I'm going to pull out my phone here in a second once we kind of get out of the headspring area. Um, Here's that spring vent again. You can see all the grass down below here. It's really pretty. Unfortunately, there's a good amount of algae down there. It's from a lot of different things that are polluting the river and not just this river, but a lot of other rivers. I mean, rainbow is actually better than most, but most in general are, are considered impaired which means they have a lot of things that are damaging the river. All right, so to kind of go ahead and get this thing kicked off, this is basically kind of like you guys interviewing me for the podcast. I got a lot of questions from Instagram. Like I said earlier, had you guys write them in on one of my stories and I got a good amount of questions. So unfortunately I won't be able to get to everybody's questions, but I'll do my best to try to answer as many as I can. Most of them were about like my personal background, um, how I got into guiding. Oh, there's a big soft shell turtle right there. Dang it. I wish I was paying attention and I got that. It was cool. He's a big guy. But yeah, most of it was like how I got into, I guess, this industry and doing what I do. And, and then a lot of questions about manatees. We're, we're on the Rainbow River, so we don't get manatees out here, but I will talk about them. Or I guess I'll give you guys a little bit of a, like background on me. So again, my name is Josh, Florida guy, Josh on social media. It's kind of funny. So with the my, my like social name, I originally wanted to be tour guy Josh, but somebody already had that name on Instagram, I believe, because my goal was to try to get a like social account name that I could use across all the platforms. So if one of them had the name taken, then I went to the next name that I had to brainstorm. And so I was trying to get in some like keywords with with like living and, and guiding in Florida. And so that's I was like, well, it'd be cool to have Florida in there. And I wasn't really sure how to how to incorporate that into like tour guide Josh. And so I started looking up uh, Florida guide Josh and nobody had taken that name yet on like Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all that. So that is how I became Florida guide Josh. I tried to incorporate what I do since I'm a tour guide. And then I also live in Florida and I do tours in Florida. And then uh, my name is Josh. So yeah, that's kind of where I got the name Florida guide Josh. Yeah, so how I got into this industry and like what I do. I am the owner and operator of EcoVenture Tours. I started the business in October of 20, I think it's 21. And I didn't get my first booking until March of 2022. So it took me a while because I got the business registered as an LLC and did all that in October. And then I didn't get my first booking 
until uh, March of 2022. And so we actually started out doing just like clear paddleboard tours. That's kind of where we, where we started and that's evolved into what it is today. But before that, so I was born and raised in Florida, in uh, Citrus County, Florida. And so like Chris River was always like my hometown and, and where when I would ever like go out on the river on the water when I was younger, it would usually be Crystal River or the Rainbow River, which is where I'm at because this is like 20 minutes away from where I grew up. There's a yellow-bellied slider over here I'm going to get a video of. He's just sunning on the log. Um, yeah, but so I grew up in Citrus County and then I didn't really have like a, like it wasn't like when I was growing up, like I didn't fish a ton really. It wasn't, I mean, I, I would go out on the water every once in a while, but this wasn't like my passion at the time. I didn't really know what to go to college for, so I ended up just kind of getting what I, like a degree in what I thought um, would be kind of a fun profession to get into. So I actually have a bachelor's degree in um, sports business, for sports management from the University of Florida. So then after I was finishing up school at the University of Florida, that was in winter, spring time of 2020, which was also COVID. I had an internship with Orlando City. They're the professional soccer team, MLS team in Orlando. And so I was working with them and then COVID happened. And then I kind of didn't have my job and my internship was, was going, it was an internship at first. So it was going to turn into a job. And then my internship kind of got shut down with COVID and I moved back home. Kind of at the time, the only thing that you could really do was be outside. And so I was really bored just kind of like everybody else with kind of being inside doing nothing so I was like well what can I do to make some extra income to uh, kill some time while I'm at home doing nothing waiting for the world to return to normal and so I was like well I had a buddy who was a tour guide at the time and he was always posting to his social media he's like oh man hard day in the office and he's like making fun that he's like out on the water guiding and I was like dang like I wish I had your job like that like that looks awesome and at this point I had no background in being like a tour guide. So he's like, hey, we're hiring. And I was like, oh, awesome. And so he trained me and yeah. And so that's kind of where I started. I started guiding in Crystal River and I did that for about a year. Then I kind of wanted, so I started as a tour guide and then I kind of wanted to go off and do my own thing and start my own business again. I had no idea what the heck I was getting myself into. It's it's a lot of work. It's it's fun, and uh, especially like doing this, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of a lot of stress and a lot of additional work that you don't really anticipate. You just kind of like, oh, like let me start a business, and then it's just one task piles on top of another, on top of another, and the next thing you know, you have you do every job and you wear every hat. Yeah, it's a lot. But I, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I love being outside. I love being on the river. And so through that, I really grew a passion for protecting Florida and conservation, the, the springs and the, the waterways here in Florida. And as I've kind of like grown and learned and met really cool people, made cool um, connections and relationships, I feel like my love for Florida and for the ecosystems out here has only continued to, to grow. Every time I learn more, every time I, I, I mean, there's a particular podcast that I'm going to shout out. Out called Florida Uncut. I had a friend share that podcast with me and they kind of dive deeper into a lot of the things that Florida is is going through. Uh, a lot about like land conservation and just different animals and the guy who hosts the podcast, he interviews a lot of um, really cool photographers and producers and people who've worked for Nat Geo and so just really, really awesome stuff. And so I've been really inspired by his stuff recently. That's, I guess, just a little bit about me. And yeah, my love has only continued to grow for Florida and for these wild places and unfortunately I mean there's there's a lot of good so I, I don't want to always like dwell on the negative but unfortunately there there is a lot of a lot of bad stuff that the state of Florida is, is facing right now and I mean it's not just here but the world but yeah um, a lot of people are more focused on making money rather than protecting our natural resources which not only is it like protecting wildlife and ecosystems and just life out here in, in the wild, but but it's also the, the drinking water. I mean, the, the spring water that's coming out of the ground here feeding into this river is the same water that feeds, I mean, that basically is the same water that goes into your faucet or when you take a shower or when you go to your fridge and you use your water dispenser. I mean, that's the same water. Um, whether you're on city water or you're on, a, uh, on well water, it's the same water. And so if we're not like protecting the land, which is in turn protecting the springs, then we're, we're in trouble. And it's not just a threat to the animals and the wildlife and the ecosystems but again but the the next generation and 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 like myself and my kids and my kids kids and so it's it's definitely 
something that needs to be prioritized more and, and we definitely don't but okay so let me get back on task because i told you that my adhd is going to bring us off task so that was a very long-winded answer for how did you get into paddleboarding as a job so there's your answer that was one of the questions where did you learn to paddleboard was another question i guess i kind of taught myself i mean i grew up like skateboarding and I mean, I like to say that I kind of surfed, but I haven't really gotten into surfing until recently with my wife because she's super into surfing. And so she has really kind of like sparked my interest in, in like surfing and snowboarding. And so, but I, I mean, I grew up playing sports and so I was always pretty athletic. I don't know. I'm pretty good at like picking stuff up like that. So, I mean, paddle boarding wasn't too difficult. I mean, if you have decent balance, if you're somewhat athletic, um, it, it does take practice. So, I mean, it's not something that I, I remember when I first started learning. I mean, to me, kayaking is super easy and I feel like anybody can really do it. But paddle boarding, again, is easy and anybody can do it. But it takes a little bit more practice for sure. You really have to take time and, and be patient with it. And, and a lot of it's just kind of like repetition. It's just the same way how you can like drive a car without even thinking about it, which may not be a good thing because you, you should think about driving your car and, and the different cars around you and whatnot, but it, it kind of comes second nature. And so when you're on a paddle board, the, the movement of the board on the water and distributing your weight properly and all of that, it, uh, it kind of becomes second nature as you practice and as you do it more and more. So, uh, but I guess I'm self-taught. I didn't really take lessons or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard. It definitely is something that um, I feel like anybody can pick up. You just got to be patient with it and, and just keep going. Another question was, um, how many different springs have you um, guided at? And then what are some similarities and differences? So I have guided in Crystal River and there's a lot of different springs out there. The most well known is probably the Three Sisters there's a, a lot more out there than a lot of people think. And I feel that, again, Crystal River, the, the main area is the Three Sisters and then obviously the Manatee population out there. But there's a lot of cool like hidden spots out there that are not, uh, not a lot of people are very familiar with. Guiding out there and also growing up in the area, you, you kind of learn a lot of these different springs and a few of the lesser known ones that are typically less crowded. So when the Three Sisters is packed and it looks like Disney World, you can go to different locations around Kings Bay and you can get away from the crowds a little bit and still enjoy springs because you know the area really well. Chris River has a, a pretty uh, pretty extensive manatee population. The, the main thing though, um, if you do go and visit that area is to, you have to time it with the tide because the, I mean, you don't have to, but <laughs> if you want good visibility in the water, it's better to visit Crystal River at low tide. So you wanna look, if you're trying to have the best conditions when you go out to Crystal River, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the tide and that it's low tide because what happens is because of the proximity of Kings Bay and like the Crystal River area, the proximity of that body of water and the Gulf of Mexico, it's only about five or six miles out to the Gulf. And so during high tide, you get a lot of the murkier water, a lot of the salt water, then turns the bay brackish and a lot of the springs can kind of get like filled in with a lot of the Gulf water and it makes the visibility not so good. So if you can time it, I would say visiting Chris River, go early in the morning, but you also need to time it with the tides to where low tide early in the morning. It's gonna be the best visibility in Crystal River. And that's not just for, I mean, that's just like the bay and, and a lot of the springs, um, you're gonna have much prettier water during low tide. And, and again, like in the morning, typically like if you're gonna see manatees, it's, it's usually early in the morning. Summertime, not so much. Because, uh, I mean, you can, it's possible, but they, they do migrate back out to the ocean. Okay, so that was Chris River. So Rainbow River, I also guide here. I do not guide in Chris River anymore. So Rainbow River, we do tours out here. We do um, daytime and nighttime tours out here. It's pretty, pretty cool. So our uh, daytime tours, we go upstream about half a mile from the KP hole. I really enjoy guiding at Rainbow Springs because you can kind of get in the water anywhere and there's a lot of cool different springs that you can jump in at and the water is super pretty. And then like our other other location, that that we do tours at it's a little bit more popular uh, for us at least with bookings the silver river silver springs and there's a lot more wildlife out there and, and like personally i enjoy filming out there and, and doing content out there just because of the fact that there's a lot to see i mean the water is very pretty out there too there's a lot more wildlife so like the rainbow river you have if you're looking at a map so like a lot of the south end of the river is developed the north side of the river is for the most part it's all owned by the state park uh, not all of it but a lot but most of it towards the top of the river Half of the river is developed, the other half isn't. Whereas the Silver River and Silver Springs, that whole river is inside of the state park. 
property line. And so all of that is protected for conservation so people can't like buy it and develop it and whatnot. There's a lot more wildlife out there, but you can't swim. That's kind of the big negative of Silver Springs, especially in the summertime when it's really, really hot and you want to get in the water. Silver Springs is not the place to go because you can't swim there, unfortunately. That's what like in the summertime, Rainbow is really nice because you can kind of cool off when it's 90, 95 degrees out. And then in the winter months, we do get manatees that'll migrate into the Silver River. And then that's when I think Silver is, is really pretty because you can kind of get alligators and manatees out there. And then obviously on the Silver River, we do have monkeys out there, wild monkeys as well. It, uh, it just kind of depends on what your interests are and, and what, you're, what, what you want to see and what you want to do. Yeah, but so the three places I have guided at, Christopher River is where I started. I do not guide out there anymore. And I currently guide with um, Eco Venture Tours of my, my company. We do tours out at the uh, Rainbow Springs and Silver Springs. Those are kind of my, where I go every day, basically. <laughs> Okay, let me get through some of these questions. I'm sorry. I don't even know if this is gonna be fun to watch for anybody. Okay, this was actually a really fun question that um, one of my friends asked. So, top three influencers slash creators that inspire you? So this is kind of a hard question. I'm gonna try not to be long-winded. So I had, I couldn't just say three just in general. Uh, so I did three wildlife content creators and then three like storytelling creators and then one particular creator that I really admire kind of look up to uh, he kind of does a little bit of both and so I'll, I'll get to him here probably at the end because he's he's awesome I'll start with my storytelling creators Chris Burkhard is like a huge huge I'm a fangirl with his stuff creatively with camera and, and being a photographer and just the stuff that he does and he creates he photographs Iceland he actually just moved to Iceland pretty like I think within the last year he used to go there like a ton and then him and his family actually just moved to Iceland not too long ago so he he's got incredible stuff and when it comes to photography and he he's a huge like storyteller he's I mean he's done tons of stuff with like Sony and National Geographic and crazy stuff like that so he's definitely a uh, an idol of mine I really admire him and the work that he does so he's a he's a super cool guy and just yeah with with the storytelling that he does and his his work with photography and, and videos that he shoots he has a few like short films if you, if you don't know Chris Burkhard definitely go look him up another like storytelling creator oh well I guess he's not really a storyteller but Gary V he's a legend if you are into like business stuff kind of like inspirational self help stuff Gary V is huge in that space he's uh he's just a really cool guy he does cuss a lot it's not I mean I don't really cuss not that there's I guess I don't know I mean if you cuss cool but I don't yeah Gary V he cuss, <laughs> he cusses a lot but but he actually is like a really really like genuine guy and and I think a lot of the things that he talks about when it comes to business and just being kind to people he's someone I definitely look up to as well so I don't know I guess it's not really storytelling but <laughs> But, but he's, he's a, a really cool guy. And then, so that was only two of, of my, I guess, favorite creators. And then fi favorite like wildlife creators, Gator Boy Chris. He does a lot of work with alligators and hands-on stuff. Not only is the stuff that he does absolutely crazy. I mean, he is very, very experienced. Definitely do not swim with alligators like he does. He's been working with alligators for over 20 years and he's very, very experienced. He's a very smart guy when it comes to handling and being around alligators. There's always the, the possibility that something could happen with any wild animal, but he is he's very, very knowledgeable and he, he does an awesome job. Yeah, I mean, he he's actually, he just bought a big chunk of land that him and his partner are turning into kind of like a wildlife sanctuary type deal. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it's really cool the work that he's doing. Paul Rosley. He is the guy in the Amazon rainforest. He's actually trying to protect the Amazon rainforest. He, there's a bunch of a uh, family of little ducks in front of me, I'm sorry. Sorry, had to take a break. Um, so I'm pretty sure that, I can't remember that he, he created like a, like an organization that's called like Forest Fighters or some, I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but basically I, I listened to his podcast episode with Joe Rogan. He talked all about how he kind of got into conservation and and specifically with the Amazon rainforest and, and he like lives there full time now and all that he does and there were people and developers that were destroying the, the Amazon rainforest. They're cutting it down for development like everywhere else. And he actually would go to these like construction workers driving the bulldozers and say, hey, why don't you quit your job and why don't you be, be on our team and help protect the rainforest? And, and I mean, obviously he pays these people and I'm pretty sure like he gets a lot of donations from people that are, are trying to help protect the rainforest. Yeah, it, it's it's awesome what he does. Paul Rosley, it's, it's R-O-S-O-L-L-I-A or L-E, Paul 
R-O-S-O-L-I-E. And then my final, he kind of overlaps because he does a lot of like storytelling and wildlife stuff, is the legendary Fish and Garrett. I've talked to him a couple of times over DM about having him out for the podcast and I would love to have him. He said he was interested, so we'll see if it ever happens, but uh, super cool guy. I think he encompasses everything that a Florida wildlife content creator should aspire to be. Obviously, like I don't want to 100% copy everything he does because obviously he's in the Everglades. I'm in Central Florida, so I, I couldn't because I don't hunt for pythons, but he is interacting with these insane animals and booping all these crazy deadly spiders and ants and he travels all over and catches these different snakes and and yeah so i mean he just for wildlife i mean he does a lot with conservation efforts but also with just education that's a big part like yes his channel and his pages are really really entertaining because people see what he does and they're like that's insane i could never do anything like that and so uh, but he is literally built up almost like a cult following where he's on the hunt for this 20 foot burmese python in the everglades and i mean his his people who like follow him him are his the people in the comment section for his posts are hilarious yeah i don't know he he's just huge into like the storytelling and i don't even necessarily know that it was 100 percent intentional but yeah he he is a huge like he does wildlife conservation the storytelling is there and he's just built up an insane insane following with his social media and so for me he's somebody that i really look up to as well paul rosley uh gator boy chris Fish and Garrett, Gary V for, I guess, business, and then um, Chris Burkhardt for, like, photography and travel and all that stuff. So those are kind of, I guess, my five that I really, really look up to and that I'm really inspired by when it comes to a lot of the stuff that I do. I think we're going to save manatees for next time. I was going to talk about manatees, but I have been blabbering way too much. I don't know if anybody's going to watch this episode because literally just me yapping. So we'll see. I appreciate you guys. I mean, I I'm going to try to make this a little bit more interesting next time time I, i'm sure i'll probably do another solo podcast episode i'm mostly doing these to fill in the gap of not having people to interview when i don't have the access to to interview people all the time or if like scheduling is an issue i try to put out an episode with the paddle perspective podcast every other week so when i'm not able to schedule an interview with somebody um i don't have an episode to go out and i'm trying to be super consistent and strict with it when i'm not able to get an interview in i will probably be doing episodes like this and hopefully if I can get you guys to ask me some questions I can kind of answer them in the podcast episodes because I, I wanted to try to be interactive in a, in a way with you guys and, and get to answer some questions and, and do it that way yeah if you guys end up finding this podcast somehow and you don't follow me my social channels um, I'm Florida guy Josh across all social channels TikTok Instagram Facebook, YouTube, Paddle Perspective Podcast is this podcast. I do episodes every other week. I do video podcasts that I will share on YouTube. And then the audio podcasts are on all major podcast streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. I just wanted to say thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love what I do. I love the content. I love being on the river. I love sharing my experiences and, and educating people about the Florida and the wildlife and the ecosystems and all that so uh thank you thank you guys again so so much and uh yeah we'll catch you in the next one peace